Hello, I'm Deborah Malone, founder of The Internationalist and host of Internationalist Marketing TV. Today's guest is Colin Westcott Pitt, Global Chief Brand Officer at Glanvia Performance Nutrition. Colin, what a wonderful pleasure to see you. It has been a while, but really excited to talk about your role currently with so many milestones. Well, thanks, Deborah. It's great to be back in touch again and delighted to do this. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, absolutely a pleasure. Well, let, let's start very broadly, because I think many people know you as an international drinks marketer. Um, you've worked in New York, London, Amsterdam, um, and certainly a lot of people remember your strategy for the most interesting man in the world for Dos Equis. Uh, but now you're based in Ireland, um, and almost seven years now, you're the uh, global chief brand officer for Glanbia Performance Nutrition. Tell us about the company, its origins, and um, I'm sure we're going to get to a, no a number of other issues. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Deborah. Um, yeah, so I work for Glanbia Performance Nutrition, which is part of the Glanbia Group, which is based in Kilkenny in Ireland. And um, the performance nutrition business is the consumer facing part. Um, so we um, market a range of nutrition brands ranging from sports nutrition to lifestyle nutrition, and then also to weight management. Well, you have a brand, um, Optimum Nutrition, that is your global flagship brand. Um, and you actually um, have achieved a number of milestones just recently. I'll let you talk, I'll let you address those, but I, I, I think the audience would also be curious um, about the development of the product. Yeah, so we've actually, at Glambia Performance Nutrition, we bought Optimum Nutrition back in 2008, um, and it was just a little over $100 million in revenue at that point, so it's been with us for 15 years, and um, we're delighted to say it's the world's number one sports nutrition brand. We, um, it's available in over 100 countries and it is known as the most trusted, the most reviewed and the most awarded brand in, in the sports nutrition category. Um, so we're delighted to have it. And um, yes, you talked about a milestone. So just recently, we were able to pass the $1 billion in revenue mark, which is something that's just a testament to the Great work of all of the teams at Glambia Performance Nutrition, and also the wonderful consumers that continue uh, to buy to buy the brand and the and the range of products that are underneath it. Well, that congratulations! That is a, a major milestone, and um, I'm sure that the marketing behind it and and the elements of growth, the new elements of growth that went into it, were were quite innovative. Would Would you share a little bit of that with us? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's a classic case in many ways. I mean, the, the, the secret that we feel that, that's been so important to the growth is the first thing is just a real focus on product quality. We, um, we have much of our um, manufacturing is done in-house, which really allows us to be quite obsessive about quality. We, we conduct over 90,000 quality checks every year on our products. So we know exactly what goes out to the consumer is of the highest possible quality. And we're really, that's a really the first thing that we look at. I think the second element of growth has really been the expansion of our consumer base. Um, the brand is extremely well known in the sort of weightlifting community always has been um, but over the years what we've been able to do is to expand that um, that uh, attractiveness beyond that sort of core audience into more sort of athletic performance um, and that's been incredibly important as we've tried to to build the brand as well as going to sort of more markets and more countries. So it's interesting that you mention athletic performance and very easy to see with those seeing the video with with that with the image behind you. But I, I believe that you also launched a new platform. There's more of you and you. And I think that addresses that expansion. Can you talk about that as well? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, what we've always been, we've talked about the product before, but what we've always tried to do with Optimum Nutrition is not only have the sort of functional benefit, but also the emotional side of it and talk to that and what these brands, you know, can do for, for the consumer in terms of, you know, living their best sort of performance life. So More of You and You is a global campaign that we launched back in October. Um, we've rolled it out to a number of markets already, and it's really built on the idea that inside of everyone, there is a little bit more potential just waiting to be unlocked. And, um, you know, we were able to develop this by 
a fairly extensive um, set of consumer research and you know just talking to lots of consumers all over the world and the amazing thing for us as we did talk to consumers was that this feeling of you know unlocking potential and there being a bit more of us in everyone was really universal no matter who we spoke to whether it be you know whatever gender age socio-economic sort of group it was really something very common which was something we thought well that's really interesting and what we can what can we do with that that is it is interesting because you you've built the brand through the difficulties of covid when when gyms were closed and and finding that emotional spark or that that universal unifier for lack of a better term is quite extraordinary through all these crises but i think that's also what came to fore in in the crises um, and I, I guess that also makes maybe um, being in a hundred companies and a hundred countries and marketing globally perhaps just a little easier. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I, I think the trick and the challenge is always to see whether there is something that is universal that goes across all of the markets, but at the same time be able to cater for the cultural nuances that are going on. And you know, as we saw with COVID, different countries were at different stages. You know of the of, of the pandemic so that was that was an interesting one for us to navigate i mean i think that um you know as, as we as we went through the pandemic what was interesting about our consumer yes the gyms were closed but you know the performance lifestyle is something that is so important to our consumers that they actually took the gym home in many cases and and just brought their exercise routines back and we saw a, a, you know a quite an explosion of the home workout there which was you know which was really interesting and really cool to see to be honest and you know i think since the pandemic what we've seen is that consumers are taking you know themselves a lot more their physical selves a lot more seriously they're much more understanding of the benefits mentally with a strong physical sort of sense and we can help to play a role in in in, in that as well with the nutrition that we offer it's interesting that you say that about how consumers are taking themselves quite seriously. Um, it, it makes me think, and, and forgive me, of the very overused marketing word purpose. But I, I really sense in you um, that the drive to, to purpose, and I, I think we know that you know, when purpose is done right, it can make a tremendous difference despite all the conversations one has now about purpose washing. Would you like to comment on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's 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 quite simple. So as Glambia Performance Nutrition, our mission is to inspire everybody, as many people as we can, to achieve their performance and healthy lifestyle goals. So that's the first thing we talk about whenever we talk to anyone about the company. Um, and then we have a strong set of values and behind that, one of which, for example, is sense of fun. So we 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 do we like to think we do serious business but don't take ourselves too seriously so that at a company level underpins anything but at, then at a brand level every brand has a specific role that it plays for consumers so in the case of optimum nutrition it is to help unlock the potential you know in every consumer and um that's to be honest that's been part of the brand and part of the company um for years so our job really is to deliver on that and make sure that we hold that true and central to everything that we do on the brand. Now, it's interesting when something is really built into the DNA from the start, um, I'm not saying it makes it easier, but I think it, it becomes a way of, of rallying um, a staff internally, and that gets projected to the external world as well. Interestingly, though, you've come from a different industry, and I'm curious, as to whether or not there are certain brands that have inspired you in your work here at Glendia. Well, uh, there is well, there are so many. I could probably go on for hours about the brands that I admire, but I mean, I guess some some quick ones. I mean, I will always be looking at what Heineken is doing. I think their creativity is is fantastic. Um, McDonald's have recently done some great work. What I loved about that is that they really look at their core consumers and what really is is exciting and thoughtful about what they what's important to their core consumers with the famous orders campaign um we're always big fans of snickers because they have a sort of core creative idea and they've been very consistent at rolling that out across multiple markets um expedia brilliant made to travel love that work that was fantastic johnny walker i mean the list sort of goes on um yeah, funnily enough we were in 
um, out in California last week and we were able to visit the BMW Technology Center and some of the things that they're doing in bringing technology into their brand offering, you know, was really inspiring to see. So, yeah, the list goes on and, um, yeah, many, many wonderful brands out there that we take inspiration from. We we call it stealing with pride sometimes. So. Uh, <laughs> at least you're quite honest about it, but it, it's true. I mean, there there's a lot of extraordinary work and I, I, I think that we all have to figure out ways to adapt some ideas to things that are authentic to us. And that that's not, that's really not easy. You've been in the industry a long time. Um, how do you think that the role of the CMO has changed in that time? Um, we know it's more complicated, but is, is there something that you find that, that makes it even more challenging? Um, well, I think some things are the same. You know, I think the, the key role of, of of the marketing function, I think, is to bring the brands to life in an inspiring and um, compelling way. I think there's also another role, which is to help um, the business understand the value of marketing and the way that it delivers on the business goals. Uh, you know, in our case, it's you know sustainable growth. Um, you know, and, and meant for many businesses, it'll be the same. So. You know, it's really important that marketeers are able to demonstrate that through, you know, real solid, robust performance metrics that demonstrate exactly the contribution that they're making. So I would say that in my time, you know, in the marketing function, doing that has become, you know, easier in that there are more ways to measure it, but more complex in the fact that there are 150 million different ways that you could measure it. So it's really having the ability to pick out what is what are the things that are actually driving performance? I think that's that's become more complex and more challenging, but at the same time, there's more opportunities to to show and demonstrate the value of marketing. Well, that that's that's wonderfully well said because I I, I do think uh, you know, and and we've coined the phrase "marketing makes a world of difference," but we meant that largely as a double entendre, in in that you know, it marketing can do good, but it also is something within the corporation that can make a difference. So I think that you've cap, you know, you've said that well. Um, well, again, tremendous milestones. So, Colin, what would your advice be to a new CMO? Cool. Um, that's a very good question. Um, oh, maybe this, there's a couple of things. I think the first thing is to always champion the practice of marketing and to make sure that you're fully up to date with the latest thinking of the practice of marketing. Things are changing so incredibly quickly. And I feel as though I've been relearning for the last sort of couple of years or so. So, and, and even before that. So I think it's quite important as you know, you get dragged in different directions to to really keep a, a close eye on that. I think you you have to obsess over your talent. Um, if you can find great marketeers who are a great cultural fit for your company, then you know a lot of things kind of look after themselves. So I think that's that's really critical. Um, and I think staying curious, you know there's always whatever problem it feels like I have to solve somebody somewhere has tried to solve it has already solved it so just staying curious about how different brands have approached different challenges I think um, I think it's always a, a great piece of advice would there be different lessons for someone who has a global role yeah I think so I think you know at a, at a global sort of environment you're looking for commonalities and it's very easy to then fall into a trap of saying everything has to be common when in reality it's a bit of and you know there are some commonalities but also some cultural nuances that you have to be really aware of and and um you know i think that's part of the exciting bit of it is to try and figure those bits and pieces out and you know, that's something we've tried to do a lot in our more review in you campaign in that that could look very different in india versus the uk versus the us so um yeah, it's quite exciting while still being um, you know, all part of the same thread. Well, it's certainly if anyone has figured out um, a lot of the nuances within the world of global marketing, it's been you. Um, what's next? What's next? Well, I mean, for sure, we want to continue growing. That would be really nice. But I think what really gives us the most pleasure as a team and as a, and, and as a brand is we just, we reach more consumers and, you know, they get to see the benefits of a, you know, the 
sort of hitting their goals. And if we can play a small part of that as part of their nutrition regime, then that's the most important thing for us. So um, that's what we get up to do every morning. That's what we'll hopefully continue to do and what gets us excited. Well, that, that's wonderful. And I, I hope you continue to share some of these milestones with us because building a billion dollar brand is extraordinary. And I know that as much a part of, of sales as that is, marketing is, a, is just such a core consideration. And I have a feeling that you might have a few others in your portfolio as well. So if you don't mind sharing some of those inspirations and secrets, um, we, we'd love to keep talking. Brilliant. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks so much, Deborah, for the opportunity. And um, yeah, we'll speak soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And congratulations. The Internationalist focuses on the continual reinvention of marketing by highlighting inspirational marketers around the world and their ideas as they move the industry forward. Internationalist Marketing TV shares these perspectives through interviews and personal stories. Thanks so much for watching. If you find this kind of content helpful, please click like or subscribe. Again, thanks so much.